Starting lineup, uniforms, and apparel will present the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. Hello once again everybody, Andrew Rogers here, the host of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. This is episode number four. It's great to have you guys here and thank you once again for joining me. We also want to thank Mitch Scott of the starting lineup uniforms and apparel. He is our presenting sponsor and we're uh, thrilled to have him and uh, he's a huge addition to this uh, podcast and uh, we're uh, we're excited to have him on board as he joined us last week in our uh, in our last episode, and uh, he will continue to be there um, throughout the entirety of the process, or at least as long as he wants to be. Um, last week, of course, we had uh, the Minto eighty ones co head coach Ryan Fisk on the program. It was a great episode. We talked about a lot of different things in terms of the last season and how it played out for the eighty ones. It was a really good conversation and. Uh, Always a pleasure talking with Ryan, as I did throughout most of last season. Um, Minto, they started off slow and uh, really turned it on in the second half. Made a heck of a run in the playoffs, and uh, who knows how far they could have gone had the season not been shut down. But because of that, we'll never really know how they could have ended up. But um, So yeah, so we've reached the point now where we're on to episode number four. Uh, today is actually kind of an interesting uh, development for the podcast, at least, and uh, that the reason that is is because our guest today, that's right, there are two of them, and uh, they've requested, and uh, I, I was fully on board with this as uh, it was something that we hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about yet, but uh, we are going to attempt to do a, a Zoom a video conference call for this uh, podcast today, and uh, Really excited to see how it turns out. Um, our guests today are Mackenzie Fleming and Danny Zweep from the Shell Lake Crushers. They were the top two scorers on the Crushers this past season. It was a very difficult year in terms of uh, win-loss record and uh, obviously finishing 14 out of 14 teams. Uh, but this team, having watched them play twice this year, uh, they were much better than their record would ever indicate um, they were tough. They were very. They played us. They played the eighty ones very tough. The two times that we played them, they were very close games both times, and uh, their season could have gone either way. I believe there was a lot of one goal games in those losses in regulation, and uh, points were tough to come by for the Shadow Lake Crushers this past season. So we look forward to having Mackenzie Fleming and Danny Zweep on the program here in a moment. We'll uh, we'll bring them on board with that. Um, a couple of things that actually I wanted to speak with you guys about um, this, if if and when this season gets underway, uh, the it would be the 2020-2021 season. Um, obviously, a lot of uncertainty going on around with everybody as to whether or not the season will actually take place. Um, there are some things that I'm throwing around in my head about the upcoming season and trying to make it uh, more appealing to those who are trying to get into the league in terms of a from a fans perspective um, one of those things that I was considering is running uh, a contest um, that would be sort of like a uh, you know pick the winners um, kind of like a like a, a, a pick em pool if you will um, you know where where you take every all the games throughout the entirety of the season and uh, you basically submit your picks every week for the games that are taking place that week and uh, basically just we'll do it on a point system and uh, run it throughout the entirety of the season. And whoever's got the most points at the end of the week, end of the season will win. Um, prize undetermined, but it uh, could be a lot of fun and could create a lot of intrigue throughout the entirety of the season. So that's what the idea is, is try and create uh, intrigue in this league and try and get people interested and uh, try and put butts in those seats when it comes time to play hockey for the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into our interview now. It is uh, dub- uh, episode number four of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast, and my guests from the Shout Lake Crushers, number 24, Mackenzie Fleming, and number 25, Captain Daniel Zwee. Intercepted, now here comes Shout Lake. 
This is Justin McRae's shot. Nice goal, save rebound. It's in the back of the net. Mackenzie Fleming following the play, tucks in the rebound. And the Shallow Lake Crushers have cut the lead to one. They now trail four to three. Advance, but now they do. Sweet. And across the line, he brings it into the mental zone. He's got it. Oh, what a stop by Williams. He got the shoulder up and made the save on Sweet and put it into the netting in behind him and out of play. Go 81s and the Shallow Lake Crushers. Danny Sweet scores. Wow, that was quick. 11 seconds into period number two, and the Shallow Lake Crushers have tied this game at three. Now, and here comes Shallow Lake and across the line. Mackenzie Fleming, shot! Off the post! Off the post and behind Williams, that was close. Connor Long, shot, that goes off of Denver Hill and into the netting in behind Williams. Wow, what a chance that was for number 24, Mackenzie Fleming. For Fleming, Fleming in across the line, he gets in, shot scores! Wow, what a nice goal that was by Mackenzie Fleming. Highlight real goal. And that cuts the Minto lead to one. Minto leads 5-4, 12-29 to play. Uh, right now, pleased to be joined on the podcast, episode number four, with uh, my guests at this time. They were the two top leading scorers on the Shallow Lake Crushers this past season. Uh, Mackenzie Fleming, number 24, and number 25, Captain Daniel Zweep. They join us now. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Um, guys, obviously, the, the the big thing is is the first question I want to launch into here is because, the, like, with hockey kind of being at a standstill, sports at a standstill, life being at a standstill because of this COVID thing. How are you guys doing with that? How are you guys coping, uh, you know, with uh, life in general, I guess? You go ahead, Mac. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm still working from home, and and I go into the office once a day or once a week rather, and um, just try to communicate and and do these kind of Zoom calls with uh, family and friends as much as I can. Uh, we do a couple poker nights every week, and um, just try to have fun and communicate with other people as much as we can. So it's been good so far. Yeah, I I would say. Uh... I've been working every day. I've been fortunate enough that uh, we've had a lot of insurance jobs. Just in, I'm in the construction uh, field, so I've been lucky enough to work every day. And uh, like Max said, actually, a bunch of our friends have put together a poker. Uh, never played so much poker in my life. Um, that's just how we connect and uh, just talk through uh, various things. Like I talk to Max almost every day. And uh, we're actually running a fundraiser right now, uh, collecting bottles for to raise money for our team, actually. Yeah, so actually I wanted to, to ask about that, and um, Mac were, and I were talking about that before he came on, Danny. Um, so do you guys want to let us know more information about that? Uh, what, what is that all about? What's the what's the goal, I guess, with that bottle drive? Uh, I guess the main goal is just to kind of help us, hopefully if the season goes through this season, is to uh, kind of get ahead of – where sponsorship might not be this year because of this whole COVID thing. Um, you never know what, how this affects the local businesses and, and whatnot. Um, so this will really help. Uh, we have a few guys, Dan, myself, um, Rick, who is our GM, and then McKinnon, who kind of runs our team's social media, um, who are going around the odd day here and there and picking, picking them up if, if people want. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to touch on there, Dan. Uh, I just like, we we're, uh, <laughs> it's funny enough that it happened. Uh, we ended up driving by one day. We were, went to go see Mac at his house. And uh, it just sort of came to me that maybe this is a time that people don't want to go to the beer store or maybe they're scared of once they're allowed to return their empties, maybe they don't want to go to public. Um, then it just came to my head that when I was younger, we used to do bottle drives all the time and we used to raise a bunch of money for fundraising to help our team for tournaments and stay over and help parents out and whatnot. So I think the biggest thing that Mac touched on is the sponsorship for this year might not be there for us. And as everyone knows around the league, like we're not a, we're not a big team that has a bunch of money. Um, so it's tougher for us to get things. And like, I know one of the biggest things that we're trying to do is upgrade our jerseys and maybe some socks and maybe get some other gear like sweaters for the team or, go golfing as a team to start the year off. Um, anything will help. So 
we're just going to see where it takes us. And if it takes us far, and that's great, but we'll see. Yeah, like that that would be huge. I mean, that that is the big question is whether or not this season is going to get underway. Um, a lot of people like uh, Mac and I were talking that this league is highly driven on local business, local sponsorship. Um, that is a big key to all of it. If, uh, you know, a local business is struggling, they may not have the sponsorship money that they would in the past. Um, you know, and there are bigger market teams in this senior a league believe it or not that uh can like i mean for example you could probably take a team like clinton throw them in an empty building and they'd be able to play a full season and it wouldn't even hurt them but uh, yeah. teams like luck now you guys um you know milverton so on and so forth it might be a little harder to attract those fans um you know so yeah like you said anything will definitely help with that um so i guess guys this past season i i would you say like, is there anything to take away from the season as a whole that is a positive output for next season? Like do you feel like you made a step in the right direction here? Uh, Mackenzie, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Danny. I'll hand it off to Dan first. Cause he played the year before. Um, he, I, I know he was saying at the end of the year that we were a lot better of a team than we were the year before. Um, we just kind of, we had a lot of unlucky breaks and um yeah, it was, a, it was a tough, tough year record-wise, but I think we were in a lot of the games that we were losing close games, and um, I think a lot of games could have went the other way. Oh, I can't hear you, Danny. Just try and get Danny back here. No, I still can't hear you. Hey, uh, I'm plugging your headphones. Plug them back in, maybe. Can you hear me? There yeah. you go. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, this year was my fourth year, and uh, I would say as a team, we played probably some of the best hockey, not record-wise, but um, like Max said, we were we had a good group of guys, actually, to believe it or not. In, in the dressing room, it was probably one of the best years. Um, everyone wanted to win. It was just – more or less, I would say the balances weren't there. Or, and I'm not saying this in a bad way, but maybe even myself or some of our guys weren't in it that game or coaching. I'm not saying it's our coach's fault or anything like that, but maybe we got out coached. That happens in sports. Like, um, yeah. it just, there's a bunch of different things, but I think as you would know, you've, you've watched the league for a while. I would say that we were definitely better consistently we just didn't end up getting the balances here and there um i know there's plenty of games that mac and i went over that we could have won and somehow we ended up losing halfway through the game on i know we were up on many good teams going into the third or at least going into the second and we'd uh end up losing by like three or four sometimes where i don't know if it's just i know in the last couple of years we've had a problem going into the second period it's always our worst period for some reason and then we'll battle back. And just, and I think the biggest thing moving forward is we got to play a full sixty minutes. I would say. Yeah, that's that's the interesting point that you make there is playing that full sixty minutes. And I think you guys can both agree that this past season was probably one of the most competitive that we've ever seen in the senior A circuit. Um, you know, with the new rules in place, uh, I think a lot of teams were more even balanced. And it's like Max said, I, I know you guys were in a lot of one goal games. Even I talked to him when we were in shallow Lake Minto was in shallow Lake. We talked after the game there and he had mentioned that you guys, you know, a couple, like I say, goal or two goes either way. And next thing you know, you guys are right up there in the standings with points. Like in this league, this past season points were at a premium. And if they weren't there, then that's what happened. Right. Yeah. And I, I honestly so, think like, you really have to get your points, like you just said. Like when you when you can get them, you need them, because this league is it's so tight. Like there's, I would say there's one or two teams that usually are above the rest. Every year it seems to be that way, or like there's a top four kind of thing. You know that are going to make it no matter what. And then from there on, it's it's anyone's game. Like 
one of the biggest shockers this year I found was Shelburne. They somehow got points and were top two or three the whole year. Um, I personally, when we played them, didn't think that they're as good of a team as other teams. Not trash talking them or anything. I just didn't think oh. that somehow they got points compared to different years, like other years in the past. And it's not like they changed their lineup that much, like that would make that much of a difference. But uh, they must have just got those one goal games. And they must have got them on their side a lot, where we also were in those tight games, but we just couldn't get that extra goal kind of thing. Even against us at home, we were playing Shelburne. I think we were up 2-1 going into the third period, and they got two quick ones near the end of the period that yeah. cost us a game. And same thing, we were up or were tied uh, in Soggy, and I think it was 5-5 five, five with like yep. three minutes to play, and they got a squeaker from the face-off on the right-hand side. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. And those are, I don't know, two three points that we could have got against top teams, and we just weren't able, able to capitalize, so. Yeah, I mean, that you, you guys hit the nail on the head big time. And you know what? I kept saying this, and, and a, lot of, a lot of people out there really tended to agree with me when I said this. Like, you guys were much better than the record, and you guys were probably one of the top teams in terms of being uh, – to, to play against in terms of how difficult it was. I mean, the thing that I admire so much about your, your guys' team is how much you, you want it. And, like – and how difficult it is to come out of that building with two points. Like, you guys go every night. You guys push. You you battle. You make it hard to earn it. And you don't give any points away. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Yeah, no, like, uh, our building's definitely, like, to our advantage just because we practice there. And it's a smaller building. And we know how to – we know how to use it to our advantage. Um, but going back to the 60 minutes, if we could somehow pull the 60 minutes – all around every game, I feel like our record would change drastically. Um, this year alone, though, like we definitely improved for sure. And I think I'm going to say just Mac and I, but like our line definitely drove our team, I would say, to try to succeed and try to do better overall, where like some guys might not be into that that night. We would try to push them harder and try to get them into the game more kind of thing. So one of your line mates from the season, I talked to him, uh, Justin McRae, number 23. Uh, yep. He had this to say, guys, uh, about uh, when I asked him about you two. Um, his quote was, uh, they're absolutely amazing guys to have on your team. They battle. They're willing to do anything it takes to win. Two of the best guys to have in your dressing room. I had the chance to play with them most of the season last year as a rookie, and playing with them for the first time felt like we played together growing up. They're a huge factor to the Crushers organization, great at hockey, and even better people. Um, Mac, do you want to start with uh, Justin? Sure, yeah. Um, I think he was on our line for six or seven games near the end of the year. Um, uh, him and Reed were, as much as he says, we're, we were hard workers on our line. And I, I can't deny that those two both outworked, um, probably both of us for most of the time. Yeah. Um, those were the guys that were going in the corners and getting the pucks for us. And um, I don't think we would have had as many points as we did without either of those guys on our line. Um, and although they, their points don't speak to where – their points don't speak to how hard they worked and, and how much of a factor they were on our line. I agree. I, I agree with what he's saying. Um, I remember always saying to uh, <laughs> to Mac, and like I'm just talking about Justin for this point, but Reed did the, Reed did the exact same thing. And Reed's one of those guys that you know the puck's going to come to your stick as well. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but McCray, yeah, he just worked his bag off. And as soon as he got on to the first line with us, he, uh, never stopped, never quit. Um, his passes were always on the tape. He went in the corners. He always got us a puck. He'd always ask us or talk to us. Like he's a good guy. And I'm, I'm, I hope, and I look forward to having him back. Definitely. Uh, so, so you guys brought up Reed. We'll go to Reed next. Um, his one is actually kind of made me tear up a little bit. Yes. No, I'm just checking. No, it was, it was pretty good what he had to say. Um, Reed uh, says here, in quote, uh, they are both great teammates. I had the opportunity to play with them as line mates for the majority of the year. Sweep was a great captain and a great leader. He led by example on and off the ice. Some people might think of him as a big tough guy from his fighting days in the OHL, but he showed that he's got great scoring talent in our league. I think he had 20 goals this year. 
one of the hardest shots I've seen from the top of the circles and in the slot. He gets it in and off his stick in no time. Goes through a lot of sticks in the season. Fleming has amazing talent and is one of the most underrated players in the league, in my opinion. Very good hands, a great playmaker. He also organizes a hockey tournament in Meaford called Hockey It's Cancer to raise money for cancer. So that shows how good his character is, end quote. Um, Danny, you want to talk with, uh, start with Reed? Oh, uh, yeah, no. I've, uh, I've played with Reed, and I've actually – I've known him and his family for, I'm going to guess, seven to ten years. Um, going back to, like, when I played here, uh, I met his family, and uh, his dad used to coach us. Um, he's a great guy. Um, and he's the same way. Like he, uh, he works hard in practice. He works hard in games. Um, he shows up, um, he tries to make it no matter what. Like, I know he, I believe he was in school that was like two hours away and he'd still come to practice. Um, yeah, I know he's pretty dedicated and he's a great guy to have too. Like we love to play with both those guys. Never had a bad thing to say about either one of them. Yeah. Macker. Yeah. He's also one of the, probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet off the ice too. Um, yeah. He's always there. He'll be there early, clean up the dressing room a little bit, and he'll stay late to help unload the bus. And even just the the chat through text or whatever. Right now, he's he's always there to to answer. And um, yeah, he's a great guy. Um, Mac, do you want to talk a little bit about this hockey? It's cancer tournament. Um, obviously, I think this year's probably a no go, right? Uh, yeah, we actually did it. It was last. It was the last weekend of hockey before all the COVID stuff happened. Oh no, kidding! Sorry about yeah. that. My bad. No, that's all right. Uh, we ended up raising, I think, just over thirteen thousand dollars this year. Um, it's actually our most successful year, and we're we're happy that no teams backed out last minute um, in terms of that. Um, but we do it, uh, or I I run it in memory of my grandparents. Um, they were both very involved in our in our grandkids' lives and. Um, my grandma passed away, I think it was nine years ago now of cancer. And, um, I've been doing this for six years now. So. Oh, wow. Well, uh, well, Hey, I mean, <clears throat> uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to figure out a way to get involved in that. Maybe, uh, what we could do is, uh, set up, a, a, a stream of that. We could probably do, uh, a, a, a broadcast of that if you want something, maybe, I, I don't know. It's like, we could, we could talk more about that obviously, but, any way that I can help out with that, Paul, just let me know, all right? Yeah, sounds great. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Danny, uh, I can't help but notice the attack uh, memorabilia you got sporting there. I know it's not <laughs> I know it's not a purchase. It's probably one that you received while you played. Um, I, did talk yeah. to, I did talk to a good buddy of yours, but he wasn't a teammate, but he's a good yeah. buddy anyways. Uh, I, I reached out to Theo Peckham because I wasn't sure if you guys had actually played together. He said he didn't, but... He did say this about you when I asked him to give me your take or give him, uh, give me his take on you. And he says this, he says, he's definitely come into his own the past couple of seasons on the ice. He's got great hands and great vision. As far as off the ice, he's a terrible employee and needs to lay off the cheeseburgers. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, I've, I've known him for a long time. Um, he actually, the first time I actually met him was uh, back in, oh boy, what year? What year was the lockout, Mac? The first like half season lockout. Like the very like, first one? Or no. 2012-2013. Yeah, because he I, I was gonna say it was my last year because he ended up coming back to practice with us and stuff. Um when they were dur like during the lockout. And uh that's when I first like met him, met him. And then uh I always knew about him, obviously. And I'd watch him. Um and then I ended up being friends with him on Facebook or whatever. And then I would see him throughout the summers because I worked up here every summer. And then now uh, I, I get the privilege to work alongside him. He comes and works with us when he can kind of thing. Um, so then we just shoot the shit about hockey kind of thing. And uh, we try to enjoy ourselves when we're together uh, working. It's, it's, it's a pretty fun environment. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm the one that has to watch cheeseburgers. I've, I've seen him eat a couple in a day. <laughs> I have I, I have no doubt that Theo knows how to pound back the cheese right? <laughs> I know about all right. Um no, that's great. Um next uh, one I want to go to, so I got a couple quick ones here. Uh first one's from uh Josh Bumstead, number sixty one. Great guys, great teammates and players. I guess Josh isn't much for words, but anyways, I thought he'd <laughs> throw that in there. 
<laughs> um, and then the next one I got here is from Nate Kramer. Uh, he's uh, defensive number two. Uh, he says, I've played with Sweep for a few years. He's an absolute beast. So strong and tough. Great shot from in close and obviously a smart all-around player. He's also one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet off the ice. Makes time for people and has zero ego. Uh, he's a good captain, leader, and gamer on the ice. Heck of a slow pitch player, too. For Macker, this was my first year playing with him, but I've known him throughout the Highlander hockey and old teammates days. When he first skated with us, the first thing I noticed was how good he was at protecting the puck, especially for a small guy. I think he could be one of the best around the league at embracing contact and using it to his advantage. He put up some silly goals this year. He's got a lot of talent going up against other teams' top lines. And considering our, uh, our team was playing a lot in our own end, he's, he's a quiet guy, runs a lot of hockey stuff on his own. Before he came to the team, he battled through injuries and in playoffs when most people would have sat out, but he's tough as nails. Both guys are great players and teammates, and you can't say enough good stuff about them. That's a pretty wicked uh, quote from Nate there. Do uh, you guys want to give your take on Nate? Can't hear you again, Sweeper. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I said, yeah, he said, he said a lot more than Josh Bum said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just <sure. laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I've known Nate for a couple of years now, and uh, he's a great guy to have on your team. Uh, I actually sit beside him uh, in the dressing room. Um, I think this year was the first year we sat beside each other. But, um, no, I've known him for a long time just through uh, common friends, and uh, I actually play – he plays slow pitch against me on a different team that uh, all the guys on the team actually play on. Um, but, no, for on the ice, he's, he's a competitor, and uh, we've definitely had our battles because I think we're both gamers. Um, I know this year uh, we got into a little bit of a battle. He's, he ended up slashing me because he was being lazy in practice, and I ended up going over and slashing his stick in half. <laughs> but uh, other than that, he's honestly he's, he's a good guy. Um, he works hard, and he shows up to practices, and he's got a busy schedule with work and everything, and uh, he puts the time in to come show up, and he comes to practice and plays a game as hard as he can. Awesome. Mac? Yeah, uh, like, like he said, I, I just met him this year officially. I, I know his name around ball and hockey. Um, I've heard he's a, a wicked hardball player and, and obviously plays slow pitch as well. Um, he's one of our – he was always on our top six D for this year, and uh, he's, he's a wicked guy off the ice and – like like reader he's he's a guy that seems like he'll always be there for you and, and that's that's the type of guy that you like to have in the locker room um i don't think there's many guys that wouldn't be be there for you in our locker room i mean like sweeper said earlier on we were a tight-knit group even though we had a rough season uh record wise well i mean that that is huge i mean when you when you can look back at the end at the at the at the conclusion of the season you can look at it as a whole and say you know what the record wasn't there, but man, we, we battled and we competed and, you know, we had a great group of guys that we could take in the next season. I think that's a huge stepping stone. And I, you know, I, I really do, I really do look forward to that because like I said, I look forward to the two games that we played against you when I came down and to Shaw Lake time. And then you guys came back to our building. Like, you know, you guys got a must watch uh, group of guys and, uh, you know, like, honestly, I just – I kept wishing that you guys had a better record because uh, I really felt like you guys could have done some damage if you would have been in on that side. But uh, um, next one I got here is from uh, Cody O'Connor, number four. That says here, uh, Zweep is obviously a big, strong guy, deadly shot. Basically, give him the puck with time to shoot inside the blue line, pretty good chance he's scoring. No screen required. Uh, Mac is really smart player, gets open in good position, finds guys open. A uh, real good puck position guy. The kind of guy when there's a crowd of four guys battling for the puck on the boards, it just kind of comes in and the puck just comes right out to where he knew it would be, um, end quote. The next one I got is from Connor Long. Not a whole lot here, but he's got some good things to say anyways. He says, uh, can't say enough about the two on and off the ice. Always show up with the same drive to play hard uh, and work, not to mention their ability to lead a room. Just great guys to stand behind and be around. And then the last one I got here is from your coach, Randy Ellis. Uh, it says two of the top end players in the league with a ton of care and respect for Rick and the Crushers organization. Um, 
You guys want to speak to that a little bit? Uh, Mac, you can go first. Uh, yeah, uh, going back to the other two there first. Um, I sat beside Cody in the locker room this year. Um, we always some, had some great, good talks about hockey and off ice stuff. And you know, Cody had one of the better shots from the point um, this year for sure. Um, he liked to get up in the play a little bit too much sometimes, but uh, he, he liked to use his skating to his advantage. And and he is a strong skater, and he's got a nice shot. Um, Connor, he was my uh, carpool buddy all year. Him and Alan Minari. Um, those were some those were some fun rides this year. I'm looking forward to them again next year. But uh, yeah, I've I've played with Connor since we played high school hockey together. So since I was in grade 12, I was eight years ago, and I've I've known him and his family since we moved up to Meaford in 2000. So um, he's a great guy on and off the ice, and um, I can't speak highly enough about Connor. Okay. Yeah, no, I uh, I just met both of those guys um, this year. Um, both seem like absolutely incredible guys. Um, I know um, O'Connor, he had a busy schedule too with work. Um, I believe he works at the point. And uh, he tried to make it as much as possible. Um, and being a first-year guy on our team, like he fit, he fit right in. Like he joked around with the guys and everything. He was good in the dressing room. Um, great on the ice, like Max said. Um, he always felt like he could give more and more. So like Mac was saying, he would, he would always try to rush the puck with his ability and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. And then Connor Long, he's just a, he's one of those guys that keeps, keeps the room light and everything like that. Great on the ice. Um, He's got great ability for skating, shooting, passing. He sees everything. Um, Just a good guy. Like I hung around Mac and him quite a bit and uh, having a fun bus ride back, he would always be in the mix of it. Um, Unfortunately, Mac had to always, be on the ride home with him, but uh, <laughs> during, during the time, it, it was a great time always being around him. Uh, right on. Uh, the last uh, the last player quote that I got, teammate quote that I got from you guys is actually uh, Alan Maneri. Um, he says, uh, first of all, there's a reason they led the Crushers with points. They both come out to uh, every ga- uh, practice and game and work their tails off. They're always leading by example on and off the ice. Along with their hockey talent and high hockey IQ, both are unbelievable dressing room guys who are able to bring out the best of everyone around them. And uh, he said I was going to have a blast on this podcast, and I am definitely doing that. So um, thanks to Alan, and thanks to all those guys for uh, giving me those uh, quotes. Do you want to talk about Alan real quick, guys? I, I, I'll i go first. Um, I didn't know Alan. I, Mac, you knew Alan before the season? Yeah, I actually coached him last year in Meaford. Right. Um, I didn't this is my first year knowing him too. Um, I met him and he seemed to be a great guy. Um, great goalie. He, he actually showed up to practice and I would say he's there to every practice I, from what I can remember. Um, if there's a reason, there was a legit reason that he wasn't going to be there. He was a gamer. He always made sure that he was working out or stretching. I know on game days he would show me like he would snapchat me and say, I'm getting ready for tonight's sweep. And he'd be in there uh, warming up and exercising and stretching earlier in the day. Um, I would say he, just coming out of junior, obviously he still had that mentality where he's a gamer and he wants to win. So he'd do everything he could on game day to win. Um, unfortunately, we had three goalies this year. So that might have threw him out of the mix kind of thing right. here and there. Um, hopefully we don't have that scenario next year. So then we could just focus on two goalies that can just battle against each other instead of battling with three. I've had that before in the past. and It, it kind of drives – it'll either push you to go harder or sometimes it drives you out because you don't realize if you're ever going to play or when's the next time you're going to play and all that right. stuff. Um, but, no, he's stuck with it. Like, he's, he's a good guy. I've talked to him. He's probably – next to Mac, he's probably one of the guys I've talked to the most this year. So, um, he's good to have around. Yeah, like I said, he was uh, he was another one of the carpool guys that I would drive from with Meaford, or drive with from Meaford rather. Um, most of the time, he was quiet on the way to games, and then you know after the games, he'd be a little bit more chatty. He likes to get into the zone, that's for sure. Um, when it when it was his time to start, he he wouldn't say a word from Meaford to Shallow Lake on the rides to the game. 
he's definitely a gamer. You can see when he's frustrated with uh, how he's playing, and he definitely doesn't like not to do good. Um, obviously, that's that's what a gamer means. But uh, you know, he's he's driven to win, and he works hard to make sure he fixes his mistakes. Um, and he's a great guy off the ice as well. Um, right now. Yeah. Hey, uh, who would you guys say was the uh, the funniest guy on the uh, Shallow Lake Crushers? Who would you say – who would you uh, put your vote for? You can vote for yourself if you want. Oh, boy. Definitely not me. That's probably – my opinion, my opinion, Brooksy. That guy, uh, that guy can bring the energy out of any, any room, anywhere, anytime. Uh, he doesn't have an off switch, and uh, he's an electricity guy in the room every day. All practice long, all game long. He never gives up, never stops. Um, and he obviously lifts lifts the room when we're down. And um, he's just a good character guy, and he can make anybody in the room laugh. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I've known Brooks for a while, and I've played a couple of years with him, and he's he's been the same guy all along. Um, I would say Connor Long's probably up there. Um, he's pretty much a character the whole time, but it, it's good because you need those guys to keep it light too. Um, Absolutely, especially when, like we said, like we deserved better in a lot of games, <laughs> and it's tough when you're. I'm gonna say like not everyone on the team's the same mentality, but when I play a game, I want to. Doesn't matter what if it's hockey or not. Um, I want to win, obviously, and it's more fun winning. I definitely know Max. Max on the same page, um, but Connor Long and Brooks, they they would know how to keep it light. Like they would come into the dressing room and joke around and make us smile and laugh. It's, it's not the easiest thing going into the, going into a game, and you know, not saying you're going to lose, but a lot of people think that. And it, it, the hardest part is trying to get people not to think that way. Um, but it's tough when you only have a win throughout 18 games or something like that. Like it's tough when you're two and 10 or two and 12 or two and 15. So I'd say those two guys would probably keep the room the lightest. Yeah. Like I, I agree with you, Danny. Like there's no question it can be frustrating. I mean, I I don't know personally because I wasn't in those shoes, but I can't imagine how frustrating that would be, you know, game in game out and you're trying to do things different and it's just not working out for you. I, I could totally sympathize with that. Um, yeah. Now, so, okay. This this league is, is really fascinating. I've, I've followed it for a number of years now, and I really honestly think it's the best kept secret in all of Ontario, to be honest. When it comes to hockey, I think it's one of the best leagues in terms of talent. I think this year took a major, st- a major step forward in that. There, would, I, would I be correct, though, in saying that there is – a little bit of fear though coming into participating in this league considering everybody's got lives outside of here and they need to be able to go to work on Monday is that a realistic fear that that most people have I know for sure in past experiences and conversations with people that uh yeah I, I would say you're not wrong um because that was one of the first things I asked like not that I like I wanted to get away from fighting kind of thing <laughs> and um they asked or I was asking them, I'm like, so is there fights? Is there hits? And then a lot of guys I talked to that were on my team the first year said, there isn't really a ton of people going out there to be stupid and try to injure people just because everyone has to work on Monday morning. Like, exactly. so yeah, I would say that's a, it's definitely, in a, it's a factor for sure why people might not want to come. But I would say over the last two years, maybe that it's, it's, there's not like, there's not a lot of hits anymore. Like people aren't out there gunning down people or anything like that like right um everyone respects everyone to a certain point um obviously there's gonna be games where there's chippy and all that stuff um but at the end of the day you go upstairs you have a beverage or you don't you go and talk to someone else on the other team that you know like it's a it's a pretty small world in the hockey world like it's everyone knows everyone so there's a lot of good talent though like you said like uh there's a couple of former players I played with or against or went to camps with and stuff, and they're all playing. And it's they're highly talented players. So, 
Yeah, uh, people, it was, it's funny because we used to have the Beer Valley River Rats in Thornbury there that we used to go watch and um, that was back, I don't know, 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, and they were a team that went out and purposely hit as much as they could, fought as much as they could just to try to, because they weren't the highly skilled guys that we have now. Um, right. So that's kind of the perspective I had in this league for a, a year or two after junior um, and even before that guys would, or even before coming out this year, guys that had played in this league or just watched Beaver Valley or say, Hey, you know, it's, it's pretty much just a fighter's league and right. whatever. So it was nice to come to training camp and I don't, if there was no fight, there was maybe one borderline big hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it was all, guys showcasing their skill and a lot of guys coming out of junior and um, bringing a lot more talent into the league than it used to be and it's 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 a really fun league it's probably the best league I've played in to date so well and and that's isn't that the truth of it like Danny you could you could speak to this you've been in the league for you said four years now and you could just I'm sure you've seen the growth from your first year to last year and and how much it's changed because I think you and I could both agree that it used to be an old man's game. It used to be a rock'em, sock'em, old-time hockey, Eddie Shore, the whole nine. Like, it used to be that way. But now you have a lot of people like Mackenzie who are coming out, like in the Holden Lancics and the Owen uh, Rons and, and that sort of thing that are coming in. Or uh, Either way, you got guys that are coming from junior and they're coming yeah. here because it's really the, the – the highest level of competition that you could play after junior hockey. And, yep. you know, I, I think it, it's definitely changed the whole philosophy of how this league is, uh, you know, goes on a, on a game to game basis. Would you agree? Yeah, no. Yeah. The dynamics of the game has definitely changed. I would say from first year to four, like my fourth season, um, there was definitely more hits and I know I ended up fighting the one game and I didn't even want to like the other guy dropped his gloves and, I ended up fighting my first year and I was like, Oh wow. Like I didn't expect to do this here. And I mean, I can't even say I've come close since then probably. Um, there's the odd hit here and there. Um, like this year, like you always get into it with your rivals too. Like, like us and soggy and it's always a rough game. Of course. Um, everyone's going to have that in any league possible, baseball, hockey, anything. Um, but no, I, w- I would say it's changed a, like a tremendous amount and, yeah, you see more skill coming into the league now and you don't have anywhere else to go. And people that still want to play competitive hockey, they don't want to go to beer league and just give it all up. It's the perfect league for that. And that's why I continue playing. I would probably play till I can't kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah, like that, that is, that is the truth of it, isn't it? That, you know, that there is, Playing beer league, it's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to go. I'm going to skate around in a couple circles. I might pocket pocket a Gino or two, and I'm just going to get sloshed afterwards and, and get to call it a day. But there are other guys that just – they're not – like the, the ones who shouldn't be playing beer hockey are the ones that are out there trying to score the Stanley Cup winning goal every time they're out on the ice for however many seconds. But, they, like, those are guys that shouldn't – they shouldn't be playing beer hockey. They should be playing in this league. Yeah. Um, Mac, my question's for you on this one because you're just fairly new to the league. What is the sell? What's the draw? What's the, what's the, the, the inspiration to want to come to this league? What should people want to know about, okay, maybe I'm going to come into the league, maybe I'm not. This is what I should be considering. Well, for, for me personally, it, it was the closest of Shallow Lake to my hometown. Um, I, I wanted to be in the league no matter what. Um, but for me, it was the driving distance, um, especially at the current job or my, the former job that I uh, was at when I first started playing. Um, I missed hockey every, every day of my life. And, uh, I, I don't know what, if, what I would have done without hockey this year. Um, it's definitely something that I don't want to stop playing until I physically can't anymore. It's, um, it's it's a fun league to play in. It's it's camaraderie. It's uh, it's having the drinks after the game with the other team. It's it's like a it's a highly competitive 
I'm not going to say beer league because it's not because it's actually a very competitive league. Um, but it's it's that camaraderie after the game and after practices and um, it's everybody that wants to be here wants to play hockey. There's yeah. no guys trying to buy their way into college. There's no guys like that, right? Like everybody's got one thing that they want to do when they come play in this league is they want to play hockey and they still think they're good enough to play a competitive league. So uh, I had a lot of fun this year and uh, it helps playing with somebody like Dan who can bury the puck like he can. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have there. Right on. Um, okay guys, uh, I, I've, i this has been great. I really do uh, appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, uh, the last question I got for you is that uh, if and when the season does finally uh, happen, um, you know, with a lot of uncertainty out there, who knows when and if this 2020-2021 season is going to happen, if it does in fact go as scheduled, what is your guys' hopes for mm-hmm. next season? Next season, like as in our team or? Yeah, like what's the hope? What's the goal? What What would you like to see in terms of uh, – improvement um from my standpoint for our team uh obviously we want to improve some players um you obviously always want to improve um as much as i would love to have the same team out like i said i want to win too um i would just say showing up to practice we're gonna need more more commitment like we had a lot of guys come up to practice but more commitment during practice like actually be there instead of just being present kind of thing. Like actually buy into what we're doing. Um, if someone else is out working, you try to work them kind of thing. Like just make it harder on ourselves. So we're always competing against each other to make ourselves better. Um, and then hopefully that you do practice like you play. It's tremendous. Like if you practice hard, you're going to play hard. Practice like crap. You're going to play like crap. It's I've seen it my whole life. Um, Obviously, you just want people competing right from the get-go. Um, when we have tryouts, if we have tryouts this year for the league, um, you obviously want new faces out there to kind of push people. You don't want people to just feel comfortable. Because um, once people get comfortable, they stop trying. They know they're going to play. They know this, that. Um, I want to see a full 60, obviously, every game. And if not every game, pretty close to every game. Like, you want to be competing. Like you said, we're relentless. So, hopefully, we can be relentless for 60 minutes. Um and if we, if we can do that, I believe, I truly do believe that we'll be in the top eight playing, playing for the finals in the A side or double A side. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just build off, build off what we have this year and um, try to get, try to get some guys to buy in and get some more depth scoring and kind of work on our defensive end a little bit more than we'd have this year. I think that was one of their bigger um, lacking components for our team this year was our defense, uh, not defense, but defensive end of the, 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 the ice. Um, we got trapped in and hemmed in way too much. And um, especially if you wanted to shorten the bench, then it, it was tough too, because everybody's tired and, and whatnot. So um, try playing with the puck more and, um, like Sweeper said, uh, get on that double A side, and who knows what can happen from there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I, I, at this time, I want to thank uh, Mackenzie Fleming, number twenty-four of the Shallow Lake Crushers, and number twenty-five Daniel Sweep, captain of the Shallow Lake Crushers, for joining me. Episode four of the WA Senior Double A Men's Hockey League podcast, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, joining me. Thanks for coming on and, and talking hockey. It's been uh, an absolute blast, honestly. And uh, I do uh, really look forward to seeing you guys on the ice uh, this upcoming season when uh, when the season gets underway. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you guys in uh, September. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. Well, once again, we want to say thank you to Mackenzie Fleming and Daniel Zweep of the uh, Shallow Lake Crushers for joining us here on the program on the WA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast, episode number four. Um, we, we, you know what, we're getting it. I'm, I'm getting a ton of feedback and a ton of viewership from this podcast, and it's, uh, I think it's going really, really well. And uh, hopefully, it'll just continue that uh, upward trend. And uh, 
really, if you guys have anything that you want to uh, throw out there in terms of ideas, or if you just want to be on the program, by all means, we can have you on, and uh, we can talk hockey, and uh, really take advantage of this uh, this outlet that we have now to discuss ev anything and everything that is hockey and the senior AA circuit, and uh, we're really excited for when and if the 2020-2021 uh, season will get underway. Someone that's going to be able to shed some light, hopefully, with us on that, and what his take is on that is uh, Jordan McKinnon. He's uh, in the Soggy Shores Winterhawks organization. He's the next guest on the WOA podcast, and that is going to be coming up on Friday. It'll be episode number five. Uh, so that's going to do it for episode number four. That's all. Uh, Andrew Rogers signing off for this episode of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast, saying take care, and we'll see you next time.